Damn the lady, whispered one of the scouts. Left of the path. Meave squinted. The Nilfgaardians had taken shelter from the falling snow under a rocky outcropping. The smell of roasting meat wafted from their campfire, and echoes of laughter could be heard. The black-clad soldiers had reason to celebrate. They had just decimated Meave's company without even drawing their weapons. Meave's gaze caught something else. A metal container into which the Nilfgaardians tossed bones once they'd been gnawed clean. It looked strangely familiar. Only after a moment did the Queen understand it was an overturned Lyrian helmet dug out of the snowy grave of one of her men. The Horsons! Meave hissed. They'll pay for this. Meave! Asking your last time to keep a cool heat! Whispered Gabor. You want vengeance? I get it. But think of the cost. If so much as a hair gets plucked from Ovain's heat, Bruver will never forgive you. And you can kiss any hope of aid goodbye. Silence followed. Finally to be broken by one of the scouts. Milady, what's the order? Do we attack? Await my signal. The queen stepped out from behind the rocks, put a hand to her mouth and yelled, Ovain! Ovain at Klenvog! All laughter stopped in the Nilfgaardian camp. Moments later, a sumptuously dressed man stepped in front of the wagons. He wiped a thick sauce from his lips, then bowed with an exaggerated courtly flourish. Queen, my condolences. That avalanche, ugh, oh, what an unfortunate turn of events. The mountains can be unpredictable, Meave said with a shrug. Accidents can happen at any time. Oh, yes? Mm, even right now. Meave leapt towards the emissary, placed two hands on his neck, and hurled him into a rock with all her might. The Nilfgaardian's head slammed against the stone, and his skull crumpled with a sickening crack. He fell to the ground and writhed a few final tremors. Attack! Meave roared. Take no prisoners! Wise choice. Take no prisoners. Enough chit chat. Draw your weapon. Ah! <laughs> 
My pain serves a purpose. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? I get the white of an eye from half a league away. Her Majesty is exceptional. One gold I need.
sounds are plenty in them. It's mine now! That was not in the spell books. Naturally, at once. You mad? Don't shake that! Now, how did that incantation go?
my speed to the great sun! This could hurt. Notice! All roads lead to Nilfgaard! Will triumph. It must triumph. Meave showed no mercy for the Nilfgaardians in Ove Nepklenvog's camp. All would share their leader's fate. And the dwarves? As predicted, they were outraged by Meave's open attack on the Nilfgaardian emissary. Bruva Hoog suddenly called for a council of the clan elders. They debated what to do with the Lyrians for a long time. The elders, outraged the Queen had once again defied their principle of neutrality, levied a punishing financial penalty, and threatened another such incident would result in a lifetime ban from entering the Dwarven Kingdom. As Meave neared Langbridge, she ordered her bugler to announce her arrival, then retired to her tent to freshen up. Gascon was already inside, awaiting her. I do not seem to recall summoning you. In that case, I must tell you to fret not. Nothing wrong with your memory. I've come with no agenda. Spontaneously, call it, to chat. Hmm. Then I propose you leave. Just as spontaneously, call it. I must don fresh clothes. I'm to see the Elder soon, and I'd prefer to not smell of horse sweat. Doubt it'd make much difference to him. And be assured, I know what I speak of. When last we met, I found myself standing downwind of him. A pungent experience. Well, Hugh was saved the experience of his breath. So pungent, I thought I might faint. Well, to revive you, pinch you awake, I'm sure would be quite a pleasure. Gascon, I beg your pardon. Ugh, I shall have nightmares now. 
not tonight. For I fear you might not sleep at all. You see, there's something you ought to know. And decidedly before you meet with Bruva. The sights we cleared of beasts, I ferreted a bit. Noted something peculiar. Any notion what it was? None. The monumental dwarven architecture, perhaps? Bones, my dear Meave. Dwarven bones. Now, guess what I found on them? Wait, don't dare give me any hints. Bite marks. Of course. After all, they'd been gnawed clean of all flesh by monsters. Incidentally, making it quite easy to spot other markings. Ones made by axes and swords. To be certain, I showed the bones to our medics, and they confirmed my conclusion. Meaning what? That the entire clan, the Fuchses... ...did not perish due to an invasion of beasts from the depths. The monsters merely ate the bodies and occupied empty homes. Now, I shared my discovery with Gabor, and guess what he did? He panicked. He started to squirm, babble nonsense. I wager my right arm, he's hiding something. Blast. Overly eager to aid us from the start he was. I might have sent something. I shall have him summoned at once. And I thank you, Gascon. I won't forget this. Minutes later, Gabor stood before the Queen. At first, he tried to mislead her with evasive answers, but as her pointed questions demolished one clumsy excuse after another, he had to give in. Oi. As King Desmond said after a hefty squirt in his hose, we can't sweep this under the rug. If you think I welcome jests in this moment, you err. My fingers itch to summon the hangman. Right. So... Tis true. I misled you. On our clan elders' orders. Supposed to make sure you destroyed Boris Rump and Davos' abyss thoroughly enough to leave nay a trace. What? Why? What did they wish to hide? They was home to the Fuchses, our mortal enemies. They'd been a-boiling our heinies for ages. Thumbing their noses, taking what they want, when they want. And the Elder in Chief didn't give a ploughing wit. So to stop them, our clan, we did the unpardonable. The Zigrin Elders saw their chance and they... Gods. So you were responsible for the deaths of all those dwarves? Me? I, I didn't raise a finger. Tried to stop them, in fact. No witnesses survived. Meaning you must have murdered the entire clan. How? Queen. You sure you... I am. And you should be sure to answer in full, omitting no detail. A few years back, we got pummeled by a horrendous winter. Stone-breaking frosts, white-out storms, avalanches. We'd travel in a painful form of suicide. Hunger drove beasts out of their dens. The pass was covered in the filth. Got to where they paced right outside the walls. Fuchses fought a hard, bloody fight to keep the critters out of Davos abyss. Lost near every axe-wielding dwarf they had. Only survivors had to winter at Burr's Rump. Our elders felt such an opportunity would they knock again. After killing the town's meagre guard, they... They set fire to it and barricaded the gates. They didn't stand a chance. Bastards. How in the world did the truth go undiscovered? Once it were over, our dwarves opened the gates. Before they'd lit their pipes, starving beasts came crawling out of the pass. The stank of dead flesh were strong. Zigrins who came back from that never were the same. 
if you'd only gandered their gaze when they had us all take a vow of silence. And then... You invented that blarney about primeval monstrosities the Fuchses had awoken by mining too deep. A riveting tale, and one with a moral to boot. Aye. But the Elders worried Bruver and suspect something all the same. That's why they wanted you to destroy all the evidence. Repugnant. You claim not to have taken part, but neither did you do anything to stop the massacre. What was I to do, exactly? The Elders had decided. They had Dwarf would listen to me. You might have informed the Elder-in-Chief. The guilty would have been punished. The guilty? You didn't ken Bruva. He'd punish the whole clan. Women, children. No exceptions. Maeve, Queen, I'm begging you. He cannot ever learn of this. Aye, I want a hack flame too when I think what the Elder's done. But t'other way it'd bring but more pain and death. I need to consider what's right. Meanwhile, Gascon, make sure Gabor remains our guest. Of course. I'll let you know if he so much as rolls his eyes towards an escape route.